Okay, so we're going to start by going over to Google and we're just going to search for Git. We're going to go to git-scm.com, click the first link, and then we'll come down to downloads. Once we're in downloads, we'll want to come over to the download for Windows. After you've downloaded the executable, let's go ahead and let's run this. We'll go through, we'll click next, next, and next. We don't need anything else there. We'll then click next again. Now we are going to leave this as Vim, although it should be noted that you can change this to anything you like, including Nano, if that's something that you're more interested in. We'll then click next, and here it'll ask us what we want the initial name of the branch in our repositories to be. Now by default, this was named master, but recently we've been moving away from the term master and moving it to the word main. So I would highly suggest changing this to main uh, just so that you're sort of on the current industry standard. You'll then click next. It'll say, hey, which do you want to use? I'll just say sure for the git command line and then I'll click next. SSL library, we'll use the open SSL library. Next, 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 and we'll click next. Absolutely, don't need any of these things, and then we'll hit next, and it'll start doing the installation. Okay, now that gets installed, I'm gonna uncheck the release notes thing because I really don't care. I'll hit finish. I'll then open up my search, and I'll search for git, and you'll see here that we have the git bash. So let's go ahead and let's open that. Now we have our git bash. Let's go ahead and let's cd to the C drive. Then we'll cd to user, dean, and then desktop. And here we'll do a make dir for the git tutorial. And we'll cd into git tutorial. Now that we're in here, we can create our git repo. For this, we'll be using GitHub. Uh, so if you don't have a GitHub account, you can head over to github.com to make one. Once you're on github.com and you have logged into an account, you should then see a plus button in the top right. If I full screen this. So up here, you can see this little plus button. You click plus, new repository, and then you can name your repository. For this, I'll say, hello world. And then for the description, I'll just say, this was for the installing Git tutorial. And then you can initialize this repo if you so desire. For the git ignore, this is going to be files that you don't want pushed up. So if you have a whole bunch of noise uh, inside of your application and you don't want to push it up, a good example of this is if you have a node project, you can ignore all of your node modules. You also have the ability to choose a license if you'd like one. Uh, this is, of course, very important unless you're using GitHub Copilot, in which case who cares about licenses, legal issues don't exist. I'm going to skip all of these and we're just going to create an empty repository. We'll click create. It'll create the repository and then it'll give us some options here. Now for this one, we're going to be using HTTPS. Uh, I will have a video in the future that will cover setting up SSH for Windows specifically. Um, but here's the basic steps it wants you to use. Now, if you have an existing repository, these are the steps you would use, but here we're creating a brand new repo, so we'll follow these steps. You have two options here. You can echo a readme file, which will create it through the command line, or you can just open this up in Visual Studio Code, which is what I'm gonna be doing. So inside of this folder, we're just gonna right click new file. We'll call this readme.md, and this is going to be using Markdown. This is the default readme that usually comes with a GitHub repository. But anyways, now we have this folder right here. What we want to do is we want to type git init. This will initialize an empty repository here. So if we now open this up, we can then say git add dot to add all of the files inside of this folder. Now, if I do a git status, you'll see that we are on branch main with no commits yet. We do have a new file here, which is readme.md. So that's good. It's detecting our new file. Inside of our terminal, we're going to want to set our global username. So for this, I'll say git config dash dash global user dot name. And for me, I'll just say Dean Dehart because that's my name. And I'll do a git config dash dash global user dot email. And for this, I'll say dhartdean at gmail.com, which is my business email. And now I have these set up. And this is just used so that you can see who pushed commits when this goes up to here. So now that we have that done, the next thing we're going to want to do is step through this. So we've already done our git init. We created our, our readme and we added it with the git add dot, but you could also add it by the file name. The next thing I want to do is create our first commit. So here I'll say git commit dash am and I'll say this is the init commit. Now what I want to do is I want to set the branch. So I'll say git branch dash m main. Now I want to add the remote origin. So for this, I'll say git remote add origin and then 
a URL of the repo. So here, because we're using HTTPS, it's gonna be just this link. If it was SSH, it would be git at github.com. So we'll say git remote add origin, and then we'll just copy this and we'll paste it in here. Now we want to push to our repo. So if we refresh this page right now, it's still the same thing. But as soon as we run a push command here with git push dash u origin main, main is the name of the branch, we're pushing it to our origin. As soon as we push this, this code will leave our computer and go to wherever we're pushing to. Now it is gonna ask us to sign in. I'm gonna click sign in with browser. It's gonna take me here and then I'm gonna sign in. It is asking me for a two-factor code. I've entered my two-factor code and now it's asking me for some additional stuff. Uh, so it wants read and write access, public and private repos and update the action workflows. I'm gonna authorize and this and we should be good to refresh the GitHub repo. And there you can see that on GitHub, we've now pushed our file from our local Git repository to our GitHub repository. And up here, we have our readme file, and you can see here the markdown has changed it so that our pound symbols or hashes or whatever you want to call them are the titles, and the rest of the font is just the normal text right here. Now, let's say we wanted to come in here and we wanted to change this. Maybe we want to create a new branch, call this uh, update readme. That's the name of our branch. We create the branch. On this branch, we then want to update the readme. So we want to say summary of stuff here, do things here. Afterwards, do more stuff. So we're just adding afterwards, do more stuff. For the commit changes, we'll just say updated the readme with more stuff. And then down here, we'll just say added afterwards, do more stuff to the readme. Looks good to me. We'll hit commit changes. So our readme here, is going to say, do things here afterwards, do more stuff. That is not going to be on our local branch here. So we'll say git status. I can even try to do a git pull. It's not going to work. It's gonna say already up to date, but if we actually open up our repo, you can see it's not actually up to date. So what we want to do is either switch to the branch or we can do a pull request. Here I'll do a pull request, compare and pull request. We have our changes, I want to pull from the update readme branch into the base branch, which is the main branch. I'll create the pull request. After I've created the pull request, I'll then take a look at what changed. So I'll come over to the commits and the files changed and I'll say, okay, this looks good to me. I'll review these changes, LGTM, because I'm a real senior developer and I'll hit submit review. So it's been reviewed. I'll now merge the pull request. I'll say merge, I'll confirm the merge and the pull request was merged. Now, if we come over here, we can then do a git pull. We now have our one change. And if we open this up, our text is now inside of VS Code. So we've successfully done a change remotely and pulled it to our local machine. If we were to take this entire thing and like delete it, can then see that we have that change here inside of our branch. And if we wanted to, we could push this up. But of course, we don't want to do that. We want to reset this. And that's how you reset it. Git reset dash dash hard takes you back to whatever your last commit was. Hopefully this helped. If it did, please remember to like and subscribe. If it didn't, I'm sorry. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.